there. Yeah, no, that totally, that totally does it. So typically on a sailboat with a solar panel installation, you have like 200 to 300 watts of panel on the back and that's there sufficient to run your lights, run a refrigerator or other things that you have on board. But for Shamrock, I'm trying to get enough solar installation to actually power the motor. And so that's a whole different league of solar wattage. And we're trying to figure out how can we just get the most solar watts without interfering with the usability of the boat as a sailboat. Uh, so my strategy here is to take advantage of the perimeter of the hull as much as possible. And it just happens that these 100 watt solar panels that we have for e-bikes are exactly the same width as our stanchions are high. And so I've been mulling this over and have modeled up a solution where we basically have three separate panels linked between the stanchions and each of those can fold up and down. So when the, stanch when the panels are folded down, those occupy no more space than you have on the boat. Um, and then whenever we want to deploy the solar, we just have some rigging in order to prop them up. And then they're outside of the perimeter or your usage envelope of um, walking around on the boat. And with the length that I have here, I'm able to fit five of these panels, 100 watt each. That gives me 500 watts down one side of the boat. We put another 500 watts of panels on the other side. And then that leaves the whole back cockpit area to have a more conventional rooftop panel. In this approach, I should be able to get 1500 watts of nominal solar. Now in practice, we're never gonna see 1500 watts being harvested, especially because you always have shadows on a sailboat coming from the mast, the rigging, the boom and whatnot. But between that wide distribution of panels and the fact that we can tilt these panels in order to have a preferential facing to the sun, I'm hoping we can be averaging at least in the 800 to 1000 watt level. And that's still enough to sustain, you know, seven to eight kilometers an hour of propulsion on the boat while we have full sunlight. So I'm really excited to try to build this together. Um, but one of the challenges for building this is that these lightweight flexible panels are flexible and floppy and you need a rigid structure in order to keep them on a uniform plane and not flopping around in the wind and developing micro cracks. But any rigid structure of this size inevitably ends up getting quite heavy or cumbersome to build. Normally on a sailboat, you make everything out of stainless steel tubing and welding up a stainless steel frame for that would you know, add massive cost, weight and expense um, to this whole project. So the approach we've taken to frame these things is to take advantage of very thin walled aluminum tubing that we were able to pick up from one of the metal yards in Vancouver. But it's such thin wall that we can't really weld or screw it together with fasteners. Uh, but we recently got a really high quality 3D printer that can do FDM printing with fiber reinforced resin plastics. And this will let us print all the necessary couplings and inserts to link this rectangular tubing to the round tubing. We can have it pinch really tight. We want it secure. It can stuff into the end. And we should be able to make this whole assembly without having to screw and rivet and bolt this aluminum together, just snapping it with these 3D printed parts. So there you saw the side panels. I'm just in the process of working out the larger 500 watt array for the back of the boat. So in this case, I'm not constrained by the height of the lifeline, so we can use our larger 170 watt panels. Um, but again, these panels can't just be supported by the perimeter because they'll flop an enormous mount. So I had to do a structure here where we have multiple reinforcing bars spanning across it. And each of those reinforcing bars, we can attach with a 3D printed part that inserts to the end of the tube and then rivets onto the cross beam over here. Um, in the case of the corners, it just stuffs itself into both ends. And these parts, we print them so that um, we have a little protrusion and standoff that lines up with the grommets on the solar panel. And that way, not only does it give the frame to support the panel, it also gives a location to screw down a screw that holds it in place and makes it easy to remove the solar panels if we ever need to take it apart and go back to the rare lightweight frame. So the plastic material these are printed with is PETG with carbon fiber reinforcement. Uh, so PETG is a nice plastic because it's UV resistant and super tough, it's not brittle. Um, so this part, I wanted to make sure that this one could be snapped over top of the tubing so I can put it in after the fact. Um, this is just to support one of the grommets from the solar panels. Um, but you can just feel this resin, like it has a beautiful finish. Uh, the carbon fiber gives it a lot of rigidity that you don't get from the plastic by itself. Um, but this should hold up no problem in the marine exposure. Um, and we're going to start a little production line just chopping that tubing to length. So I'm just going to prepare the build tray for doing that print for the 500 watt panel at the back. Um, scrape off the old uh, what's left and just a little bit of adhesive for it to bond to the build tray. So I'm going to just go run up and hit print. Love it.
the weight of actual silicone wafers is almost nothing. So in theory, a solar panel could be just absolutely featherweight for the watts that it produces. Uh, but the reality is that the panels have mass because of all the encapsulation and the frame structure needs mass to support the encapsulated panels against the uh, flexibility. Um, so I'm just kind of curious to see what kind of efficiency we're getting as far as all the materials to support the panels. Um, so this is for 400 watts of panel for 100 watt units. Uh, the aluminum pieces add up to 5.3 pounds. 3D printed hardware, uh, 1.3 pounds. And the solar panels themselves give us oof, 17 pounds. Uh, so right now with this stuff here, uh, our support structure is like one third the weight of the panels themselves, which is pretty darn good. Uh, this doesn't include the tube that actually sits across the stanchion line, so there's a bit more weight, plus all the small stainless fasteners. Uh, but it makes me pretty happy when we can have a supporting framework that's quite a bit lighter than the panel itself. Um, so happy with that. Good. Uh, 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 so here's where we have our little moment of truth to see if I got all my angles right in the 3D model for this uh, printed component. And if I slide that on here, ideally, if I look at this flat plane here, it should perfectly line up with the next stanchion down there. And I would say, eh, like 80% of the way there. There, yeah, no, that totally, that totally does it. Uh, yeah. Great. Look at that fit, that is just perfect. So here's a little moment of solar raising truth. Obviously we'll need to figure out some kind of telescoping pole in order to lock it in at a given angle, but that seems to uh, function just as hoped for. And then capturing sun, we go like that sailing with this sails in the way it drops down it doesn't take up any more room than the original lifeline does and uh, I'm happy uh, so our hope is to put this somewhere about here ideally just above head height and then mount it in a way that we can tilt it forwards and backwards um, and the kind of working plan I've got for that um, is that my neighbor uh, replaced his bimini and uh, took away all of the old uh, stainless structure that was there. So I think I should be able to print an adapter to link right to there. Have another vertical tube that pairs up with the existing one. And then that will give us a horizontal bar just at the right height. And then we'll make pivoting clamps that fasten on here onto which that big solar array We'll anchor and then uh, and then we should be able hopefully that'll be strong enough it's pretty you know it's seven eighth inch diameter tubing and it's quite a high height up there um, but we'll only find out after we put it together how stable that is yeah so in addition to the big update on the solar and electrical system we're also updating the motor that we're driving this uh, sailboat with um, the original motor was based on the 25 7 millimeter stator that we use for the bicycle hubs um, and it worked perfectly for this side of boat uh, but it was kind of right at its maximum thermal point when we were running it at 5,000 watts um, and a lot of people are interested in even more powerful motors for more powerful boats uh, so we had a batch of stators and rotors produced with a wider 45 millimeter 
uh, motor size. Um, this is a common size that you get in you know, really high power e-bike hub drives, so it was pretty easy for us to source. And that lets us increase the torque and power capability by 50% uh, while still being super lightweight by the standards of a marine motor. Um, so this should let us be able to run 5,000 watts with no concern at all for heat, and then go up to 8,000 watts if we wanted to, which is kind of useless on a boat this size, but for people with you know, 30 to 36 foot sailboats, uh, a motor this size is just ideal. Um, so yeah, we're going to do our first sea trials with the bigger motor. Uh, because we've got this extruded rail system, we can install this larger motor with no real change to the hardware. Everything will just slide back the extra 15 millimeters to account for the extra width. We started working on this about a week ago and we're now coming at the point day before departure where we're of course scrambling to get it all done in time. But uh, uh, here you can see our planned solar array was to get 1500 watts. We're probably going to be more like 1300 given the time constraints. Um, but this is a large panel going over the rear of the boat uh, where we uh, created our own little arch structure in the back of the cockpit to support it. Now I've just got things sort of place held in, in position so that we can cut these tubes to size. And then we've again 3D printed um, mounting clamps exactly matching all the tube diameters and angles that we have to deal with uh, so that we can install this kind of structure without any welding. Um, and this panel here at the top it's going to be mounted in a way that it can pivot forwards and backwards uh, so we have the ability to aim in the sun there. Um, and I'm really super happy with how this one's turned out. It's, uh, it's really lightweight and this should be more than sturdy enough to do the necessary support that we need. Um, the panels on the side on the other hand are kind of ungainly. Um, so my intention here was to go all the way to the front of the boat, so not just with the four panels you see, but a fifth one. That gives us 500 watts on each side. Um, but I was a little bit concerned about the obstruction of visibility. Uh, so when you're sailing, generally we'll have these side panels down so that they don't interfere with the, the rigging. Um, but you kind of lose the line of sight right into the water and it doesn't look so sailboat like. Um, I think it'll hopefully look better when they're raised up sideways um, uh, under just solar power without the sails. Uh, but longer term, if this is more solar than we actually need, I'll probably get rid of all the ones in the front and just keep the two panels on the side. And then this guy maybe extend forward. So if you look here, um, this gives you, we have 370 watt panels all oriented this way, um, but there would be room to come across just in front of the boom for another extension here and that would increase the shade and rain structure too. So if I can transfer a couple hundred watts from here, take them off the side, I won't lose too much uh, solar capture but I think I'll have a nicer layout for long-term touring. So one of the challenges with these panels on the sides, of course they have to hinge in and out and I didn't want a maze of wires going above the deck. Um, so we uh, to sort of design this all based around a large one and a half inch diameter tubing to give a natural conduit for the cable runs. Uh, but of course running cables inside the tubing of any kind of frame structure is a bit of a nightmare um, for all the, the cable runs and the pass throughs. So we're trying to pull this off neat and tidily before the end of the day. Um, but it's going to be a stretch. So right now we're, we're wiring each panel with its own wire. Um, so out here we're going to have five pairs of wires for each of the five pairs of panels. Um, each panel here is going to get its own wire coming down. In total there's going to be eight solar feeds that are all going to go below deck and then you're going to have eight separate charge controllers for each panel group uh, heading into the battery pack. So we're going to need to get all this wiring below the deck um, and into the hold here. On my electrical panel I've left this whole real estate down there blank uh, so we should be able to just put in a row uh, the whole solar system along there with some nice cable conduit um, and then that will let us see individually what each panel is doing and of course we get the collective output on the cycle analyst screen um, showing us the net from all of them and that should be enough when it comes to tilting the panels that we just need to look at the collective output to see uh, when we're at sort of the maximum angle point and what we're getting.